Good evening, Fathers Heart Digital Church. Good evening, South Africa. Welcome to us in this glorious evening. It's an absolute privilege being with you. And um, tonight we look at the seven battles in 1 John. The seven battles in 1 John. And uh, what a privilege to share this um, topic with you tonight. And uh, let me see if I can get that on the screen. Yes, topic number 131, the seven battles in 1 John, in Little John. So if you go look at the book of um, uh, John, the uh, um, Little John, uh, 1 John, and that's where we're going to spend our time tonight. And there's seven battles in uh, 1 John, and uh, we will go in and check these battles out. And it's amazing to see how these battles are set up. And if you go understand the seven battles and see how you can work to overcome each one of those, each one of those battles, one battle at a time. And that's the beautiful part with tonight. We, unfortunately or fortunately, I love it when we have loads of scriptures. So we have loads and loads and loads of scriptures tonight. So I will have to, to um, go quick. I've... Uh, one or two of the scriptures I've taken out. Um, I will take a little bit of a shortcut here and there, purely to make sure that we get the message in tonight and we understand the message. And um, that's the beautiful part of uh, where we're at. So uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I think I've said hello um, on behalf of a, of a few people. And uh, thank you for being on this call with us. And uh, let's, uh, my apology, I shouldn't do that. The camera is jumping when I do that. Um, but let's jump in here and um, just commit this meeting to the Lord. Lord, we just come and say thank you for the fact that we can come and place this topic, the seven battles that we find in 1 John, that we can place this topic before you tonight, Lord. And every person, every name that you see here on the list of people that watching, Lord, thank you. Thank you for every person. They they serious about you, Lord. And tonight we want to come and learn from 1 John. We want to come and learn what are these seven battles and get guidance, Lord, from your word, what you say about this and how you tell us to come and to, to overcome. We, we praise you and we bring an offering to you as our Father and we submit to you and say, Lord, we humbly come before you and give you an offering of our time, our energy, our effort tonight. Allow our helper, the Holy Spirit, to come and break open this word for us. No focus on a person, but only on you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that is um, that is evening then. Hello, everybody. And um, let's jump directly straight into the word. Hence the fact that there's so many scriptures. And uh, the seven battles in 1 John. The seven battles in 1 John. And um, let's, uh, let's start. Now... I've, I've tried to make this as easy as possible in showing you these seven battles. So I know it's, uh, it's not very clear on the screen, but um, I just need this as guidance for myself to know where I am as I continue. So um, whenever I get lost, please just tell me at which number I am. The first battle of the seven battles we find, and um, it's a battle of light versus darkness. So it's the battle of... Of light versus darkness. And you and I know that Jesus Christ is the light. He is the light. And you and I, because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He is the indwelling light in us. So we are the light. And that's why I love to say when I finish any talk, any any um, teaching or anything, I love to say that I, I sent you forth to go and be the light. Because I hang on to this word. So tonight we look at the seven battles that we find in, in 1 John. And the first one is light versus darkness. And it's all about your profession. Now, if it's about your profession, it means where you're at. It means your location. It means uh, where you are applying yourself. So it's, it is your profession. It is, but it is in essence where you apply yourself, where you find yourself in your community, where you find yourself in your home fellowship, where you find yourself in your family, your profession, that what's, that's what's keeping you busy on a daily basis. And that's the first part. So there we need to see the light. So we need to see the light in your in your household. We need to see the light when you go to your work. We see, need to see the light when you're at your work. We need to see the light when you're everywhere. Not only when you're on a specific time 
in church. We need to see the light throughout, always. And um, we need to understand that. So the first one is light versus darkness. And let's go read that. And uh, we find that in 1 John 5 verse... Um, 1 John 1, my apology, 1 John 1 verse... 1 John 1 verse 5 to 10. Um, and um, let's just read. And I'm going to skip some scripture here and there. But um, you can... Go, please mark them. Go read all of it. Um, purely because of the time, I cannot read every every word of it. This is the message which we have heard. 1 John 1 verse 5. I found myself. 1 John 1 verse 5. Light versus darkness. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So God does not have any darkness in him. And you and I should go and we always on a, on a journey as being the bride of Christ, creating us a pure bride, a bride that is ready for the bridegroom. And um, in that, we strive to be more and more like Jesus. And we strive to get rid of the darkness in us. Every one of those little corners where you find some darkness, where you do something, when you act, when you react, and you find a little bit of darkness, to go and clean that out and allow the light to go in there. And I had to, in one of the, part of the testimony that I've told once or twice before, I had to at some point hear God saying to me, and, and remember I always say I've never heard God's voice audibly. I hear, I, I hear God's voice within me. I hear God's voice and I know that it's Him speaking and it can happen anywhere, anytime. But I, but I once was um, busy after a lecture at the Bible College. I talk about 20, 2002, 2003, or maybe 2001. Um, but after the Bible college, I was on my on my way in my car, and I clearly heard God say to me, "Are you born again?" And I had that runny tummy feeling that you know what, God, how's this possible <laughs> that my father can ask me, "Are you born again?" And and I humbly, in in shock, submitted myself and say, "Lord, you know, you know that you know that I know." <laughs> that I've accepted you as my Lord and Savior. And all he said to me was, and your finances. Because my finances was, according to me, my finances was in the light. I had a budget. I budget. I had a budget. Everything was recorded in the budget. Everything was done according to that budget. And um, at that stage, I, I adhered to a strict budget. And uh, that's a story for another day. And um, God said, and your budget. And immediately I knew what he said to me. My, I was in the light. I lived in the light. My budget was in my eyes in the light. But I have not committed my budget as it is. Line item for line item to the Lord. I created the budget. I, I tithed. I've done everything. I've committed to my budget. I've, but my budget was not in, in the light. Because I did not discuss line item for line item with the, with the Father. And just like that. By... By in that way and your budget and because there was no light. Remember, I want to, to tell you and I want to encourage you to have light in every area in your life. We have to make sure that we get rid of darkness and um, it doesn't matter where it is. Maybe there's something in your, in your life that you think, I thought my finances was in, in the light, but I didn't sit with my budget, me, myself and the father and discuss line item for line item for line item and I tell you, so many things happened uh, to me with regards to my budget. I've got many testimonies about that because that was the area that I was um, operating in profession. Remember, the first one is about your profession. Where do you operate in? And that's where I had to, to endure and, and go get past the tests. Now, I want this to encourage you tonight, although what I said is, is um, part of my story. It's purely to encourage you to see that we need to get everything in the light. So if we say that we have fellowship with him, verse 6, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. We cannot, cannot be in darkness. And that's why we need to go find our life. We need to go find every area. And the first part is our vocation, um, our profession, where we are, what we do on a daily basis, what's your hobbies, what's the stuff that you do. We need to find Jesus Christ. We need to find the light in every one of those areas. Verse 7. 
But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And there in, in there, there's a part of there's a part of that light. In that we once we have this light, we will come into fellowship because we will be in good standing with the people around us. And there we have that fellowship word, that, that fellowship word. Isn't it what we're busy doing? We're preparing this topic for us to go and learn and to go and apply so that we have the boldness to be able to go talk about this topic outside of home fellowship. But we start with it in a, fa in a safe place in home fellowship where we can fellowship together when we, where we're safe to understand it so we can create the boldness. If we say that verse 8, that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And we need to make sure that we be able to, to say and confess and allow the light to overtake us, to get into every area where there's just a little bit of shade, a little bit of, of not uh, a fully lit area. We need to allow the light to come in. Verse, I'm not going to skip, uh, sorry, verse 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our, us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And it's imperative that you and I don't make ourselves out to be something that we to be something that we are not and it's imperative that we go and look at then we continue in chapter 2 verse 1 and it, it, every time John in little John we, we call this this uh, uh, these books um, or these letters little John and um, in in uh, uh, 1 John and um, 1 John we talk about these um, these different uh, ch uh, chapters in the book and every time it starts with my little children it starts with my little children a, a term of endearment a term of being close together a term of a term of being um, uh, together as one i skip to verse 3 and allow me to read verse 3 and please go read the balance it's important for for you i just had to to skip one or two now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And you and I have a light to shine out there. And our light should shine 24-7, not just on a Sunday or not in a time like we now on the call. And now all of a sudden I'm all holy. It should be something that I pull through in everything that I do in my life. And um, verse 5. Uh, but whoever keeps his word truly, the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. And it's imperative for you and I to, as we allow the light, to get more and more in line with what Jesus Christ has created and done for us. Then we go to the second, the, the second one of the battles. And please go read the balance there up until verse 12 in, in 1 John 2. Um, the second one in there is the second battle that you and I have to overcome is the battle of the Father versus the world. The Father versus the world. Because desire, our desires as people, and the world is bringing us all these desires and, and enlighten, awaken these desires in us. And that is the Father against the world. Who do we choose? Do we run after the Father or do we run after the worldly goods? Do we run after the Father or do we run after people to impress people? Do we? That's the fight. That's the battle, our desire. And uh, we find that in, in 1 John 2, verse 12 to 17. So 1 John 2, verse 12 to 17. And uh, let me go and read a little of it. Um, I write to you, verse 12. Little children, again, this little children, and, and it's not demeaning, it is enduring. And when I read this, um, I, I give that, that, um, that uh, uh, frog in the throat, the throat um, idea when I read this, because it, it makes me feel as if I'm little children, as if I feel, I understand that, that word of endearment. It's not belittling, it is lifting up. You into the arms of the Father and, and, and helping and assisting and being there. So for me, it's a choking up moment when I read that. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven uh, you for his name's sake. So my sins are forgiven. I am in the light. Therefore, I should make sure that I continue 
being in the light. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you little children because you have known the father. I've written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I've written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. And it's imperative for you and I to understand that we need to go and find the Father and we need to go and cling and do and find the Father. Do not love the world or the things of this world. There's this desire, that fight that comes in the world. What do we want? Do we, what do we want? Do we impress who? Or do we actually press in with the Father? And Lord, I just commit this to you and your outcome I will accept in this situation. But Lord, I want to make sure that what I need to contribute, what I need to accomplish, what my part is in this, in this battle, I will achieve, I will accomplish, I will bring to the table, I will press, press through, I will come in love, I will. Can, can we see it's the, it's the Father against the desires of the world? And you and I need verse 15. Um, do not love the, the world to the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all this is in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Brother, sister, that's where you and I want to be. That's where you and I want to abide. We want to abide in in God. We want to abide in the will of God for our life. We want to find that. We want to abide that. And we want to press into that. Then we go to the next the next one of the battles. And you can hear I'm going like this because there's a lot to do. We're only at the third battle now and uh, we have seven. So the third battle is Christ versus the Antichrist. So that's about the doctrine. Do we understand the doctrine? Do we have the right doc doctrine? Do we Push in the right doctrine. Do we, do we make sure that we understand the doctrine and um, make ourselves aware of the doctrine? So it's Christ versus the Antichrist. So the focus on this third battle is Christ versus the Antichrist. Who do I choose? Where do I make myself known? What is the story that the people will tell about me? What's the story that the people will tell about me? I, um, this week again, um, had the unprivileged to be with friends um, at a place where we had to say goodbye to a friend that I've known since 1990. And I know in the early 90s, he's gone to men's camps with me three, maybe even more times. And um, I spent lots of time with him. He was my golf buddy for some time. But we had to greet him this year, uh, this week. And we had to say goodbye to a dear friend. And um, the key is, do I know that I've left a little bit of light where I've been. Do I know that I've that I brought the light to the front? Nothing about me. All about the Father. All about the Father and just the, the privilege of being with people and having an influence in people's lives. 1 John 2 verse 18. Remember we're talking about Jesus Christ, Christ versus the, the Antichrist. 1 John 2 verse 18 to 28. Little children, um, it is the last hour. And you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And you and I, we are in this battle. And this battle is coming for 2,000 years already. This battle, this last hour is being announced. And this announcement, because God is time. Time is in His hand. He is the beginning and the end and everything in between and everything forever. And um, God doesn't, is not restricted to you and I, to our um, uh, calendar. He is time. But this last hour is announced, and the Antichrist is on his way, verse 19. They went out from, from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. And that's the key. Who are we of? People talking about you, people looking into your life, people looking, seeing who you are. Do they think you are of us or do you think you're not of us? Because we stand for Christ. Sorry, we stand for Christ. 
And we need to make sure that we stand together. Verse 20. And it's an important verse. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Do we have this anointing? Do we use what we read in here? Because this is what Christ has done for us against the Antichrist. I have not written to you because um, you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. And we need to make sure that we can stand on our word and that our word is truth and that our word is um, of truth. I want to continue reading and I read, I'm going to skip verse 22, verse 23. Um, remember, you have to go read this. No, let, let me read verse 22. Who is, who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. If I deny Jesus Christ, I need to deny the Father. And that is the key. And you and I need to understand that we need to confess the Father. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. Either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, um, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If, you, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you always will abide in the Son and um, in the Father. And it's imperative for you and I to understand that He was promised for us from the beginning and that we need to understand that we can stand on that promise and that we can stand in that promise. Then we go to battle number four. So we now already at battle number four and we nearly out of time. Good works versus evil works. This is now about our conduct. So the previous one was about our doctrine. This one is now about our conduct. Can you see the different battles have different battle lines and this battle line is on my conduct, what I do and who I am. And, the, and that's, the, that's the key one. Then you can go read um, verse 29 in, in 1 John 2. I'm going to jump over to verse uh, chapter 3, verse 1. And this is from 1 John 2, verse 29, up until 1 John 3, verse 24. Now I'm just going to read a few scriptures. It is at the bottom of the page. Um, please just go write it down and go read it. Behold what, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, but it did not know Him. If the world does not know you, it's because the world does not know Him. If the world knows Him, the world should know you. Did you hear? If the world knows Him, the world should know you. Those around you who knows the Father will know you because you will stand out because the Father is in you. Beloved, now we are children, verse 2, of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And the key is for you and I to make sure that we stand with the Father, the good works, our conduct. Through our conduct, people should know that we are of the Father. Through our conduct, that is away from just my little bit of time that I spend in, in church. That's my everyday life, my vocation, my profession, where I go, what I do, wherever, when I'm next to the rugby field. Then we go to the, the next battle, and this battle is battle number five. And uh, battle number five is five is the number of grace. And battle number five is about the Holy Spirit and uh, the Holy Spirit versus error. So this is discernment. And you and I, we need discernment. We need to know and see what is happening around us. We need to, you and I need to go and discern. Because a lot of people will come with a lot of stories. But you and I need to discern. And discernment is a lot of time purely that that you know in you. Discernment, sometimes you cannot put your finger on it. It's not a word. It's not an act. It's not a thing. It's a just you know. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will discern error and the Holy Spirit will make it known to you. But you and I need to stand on the Spirit. We need to trust the Spirit. We need to be plugged into the Spirit. And remember, it's important that we understand that they, they've, they've done tests. And tests say that you, if an opera singer wants to sing a certain level in, in 
they have certain tones in there or levels or whatever. I'm not a professional in that. In their voice, they will never achieve it. They have to hear it first. They have to hear those changes in the voice for them to be able to go and do it and to be able to perform that. And um, the same with you and I. We need to know. We need to hear. We need to hear the word as we profess the, the word, as we share our testimony. We need to know. We need to press in. And this is part of what we're busy with. Um, in in this Holy Spirit versus error discernment, and um, <laughs> I need to haste, uh, make haste. But uh, one John four verse one to six, and um, I'm I'm not going to read uh, a lot of. Uh, my apology, I lied to you. One John four verse seven to twenty one. My apology. One John four. If I just read what's on the slide, I will be safe. Hey, thank you for covering me. One John four verse seven to twenty one. Beloved, let us. Love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is uh, who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this love we manifest towards that God and His only begotten Son into this world, and this will help us to find discernment, because God is love, and within discernment we will find love. In this love, verse ten, not that. We loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be propitiation for our sins. He was the one that's taken the sin on Him. He stood in there. And um, allow me just to read one scripture more, and I know I need to haste. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God that any time that I ha that we love one another. And the, the key is that you and I need to love one another. If we do that, God abides in us and His love has been perfected. And we need to go find the love of Christ. We need to go find the love of God because within there, we will, we will find um, a trust and we will find love and we will find um, that we will be able to stand on this perfect love. Let's jump to verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And we live in a time where a lot of people live with fear and live in fear. And love is the one thing that can cast out, perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. It's not me who done anything, it's him who done everything. Did you hear that? It's not me who done anything. It's him who's done everything. And it's important for you and I to understand that we have to go find love. And I now know that I've skipped into, into one of these areas. And I am already in um, love, and, love versus patience. And uh, then we go into, let me put that on the screen. I said you have to help me. To stay in line, eh? I have to get in line and stay in line. Uh, the sixth um, battle is love versus patience, and that's what I've just read. And the seventh one is um, God born versus others. Are you born of God? Are you God born or not? And um, the key is that we now have to have a new birth. We've dealt with love versus patience, which is our motive when we talk to one another. And now we, we skip over into God born versus others. Are we born of God or are we born, born of others? Whomever, 1 John 5 verse 1 to 21 verse 1, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of, of him. By this we know that we love the children of God Sorry, when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are for not burdensome. burdensome. Um, for this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. For the love of God is not burdensome. Verse 3, and I've read it twice. I don't know why, but someone had to hear that. Verse 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith is the victory that has overcome this world. It's our faith. And that's the, that's the key. 
that we understand that our faith in God. We have to go stand on our faith in God and we have to go and be able to press in with God so that we can stand, so that we understand these seven battle battles. So let me just put that on for the last time so that we can grab it. The first battle is light versus darkness. It's your profession. That's where you're at, where you live, where you've done everything. And that was 1 John 1 verse 5 to um to one uh, one john 2 to 11 then father versus the world is our desire is one john 2 12 to one john 2 17 then the third one was christ versus the antichrist which is our doctrine which is one john 2 18 um, to one john 2 28 then it's good works versus evil works that's our conduct, and that is 1 John 2 verse 20 till 1 John 3, sorry, 1 John 2 verse 29 till 1 John 3 verse 24. And then the Holy Spirit versus error is discernment. It's 1 John 4 verse 1 till 1 John 4 verse 6. And then love is uh, versus patience is our motive. What's your motive is 1 John 4 verse 7 till 1 John 4 verse 21 and then the last one is God born versus others new birth it's 1 John 5 verse um, 1 to 21 and um, that is the seven battles according to 1 John and we come and we just say Lord we want to come and press in Lord we thank you for the privilege that we could see and look at these battles Lord, help us that we will go back to 1 John and that we will go carefully read it and apply our, our mind and allow our spiritual eyes to be opened so that we can see these battles, so that we forewarned before we step into each of these battles that we have the discernment to discern for what is the world and what is from God, what is in darkness and what is in light. Lord, I bless everyone in the sound of my voice to go and be the light. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool, that was uh, very busy, very quick, but thank you very much for the facilitators. I'll see you in the Zoom room in, give me a minute and a half, two minutes. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye.